You show up on social media a lot. The story is, I didn't like you at first. You still don't like me now sometimes. <laughs> My mindset, come home from Bible school, and then I met you. Being accepted and adopted in by a father. So that's when the Lord really shifted my heart. Well, here we are. Here we are. How do you feel about doing this? It's extremely out of my comfort zone. But here I am. Right. Doing the things. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I've been out here doing these like for months. Almost a full year. I think 50 a couple episodes have went up. Wow. Right now, life is a little crazy. I got three episodes ready to edit and mm. get published. It's been fun talking to people. And so like one of the things you and I talked about was like getting a chance to just sit down, have a conversation, and maybe people will learn a little bit about our backstory. Because you show up mm. on social media a lot on my, on my feed. Yes. And <laughs> you are the only video that I've had that has got oh, almost Lord. a half a million views. Mm. Um, a little reel of you laughing. Mm -hmm. And so... Which is ridiculous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I feel the same way. Like, it's, that's viral. It's not really viral, but it's viral for my page. And, mm -hmm. like, for it to go that crazy, and there was no effort in that video. No. And today... It's very random. We've been out here for 30 minutes setting up, and, um, yeah. And so you have been on my page a lot. People see your face and your pictures. They like them mm -hmm. more than mine. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about our life and story together. And, and one of the things I think I thought would be fun to talk about, especially since we do a lot of like addiction related stuff mm -hmm. on the podcast and on um, sharing a lot about stories and testimonies and some of the struggles of the rebuild and thinking about kind of how you and I met all those years ago. So we've been married, what, 15 years now? 15. Yeah, one year more than Chloe. And so for mm -hmm. anybody that's doing math, <laughs> we have a daughter that is 14. And mm -hmm. we got married a year prior. She was born 13 days after our one year anniversary. Right. And so that's cool. But let's talk about us meeting back then. You not coming from a drug and alcohol background. Right. And me having that history, being fresh out of Teen Challenge. And so... Mm. Like, I guess first and foremost, what everybody wants to know is what were you thinking? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I guess it was really just the Jesus factor, right? My mindset, come home from Bible school, and then I met you through another friend. And so the whole drug factor wasn't like a thing. It was the Jesus factor now, you know, and seeing that like your walk was real and that you had intentions to be a ministry that kind of drove everything. And the story is... I didn't like you at first, right? Right, yes. But. <laughs> you still don't like me now sometimes. I feel like you wanted to say something else there. It's okay. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. And you would tell me stories, and maybe you've mentioned on the podcast before, of like opportunity, like before you even started dating, opportunity to go back and do the things that were part of your life in the drug life, and you saying no to those. So it really like made it clear to me, like this guy's serious. Like he really is going to pursue God now. He's already said no to so many things that were a part of that life. So that really says to me, like, like he's really going after God, you know, he's going to walk away from that life and he's really going to go for the things that really matter. So talk about your journey up to that point though, like Bible college, right? Mm -hmm. I know the story on uh, other people don't like, right. how did God call you to go to Bible college mm -hmm. being from Stanton via West Virginia? Um, <laughs> even though, uh, mm -hmm. like going all the way across the country, to Dallas, Texas. Right. Yeah, like that's a big deal, you know, and I know yeah. I know in our marriage like I know how much your family means to you. Mhm. Mm and so talk about that a little bit your call, you like right. call of God to go do that. So I really got saved like I guess I was in ninth or 10th grade and then from there it was like it was like dramatic for me like okay so I'm saved now as a teenager and so like this is going to be for real this is how it's going to be and, and I'm not going to steer away from this and so you know I was just committed to um, church and youth group I was a youth like student leader kind of they put me in that role a little bit so then there was just a, a moment during a service one Sunday that I just felt the draw it must have been the Holy Spirit just pulling me toward the altar and I remember sitting there with my um, my mentor Christ crying saying like whatever it takes whatever God wants me to do I'm going to do it mm. you know and that was like my moment from then on it was like 
yeah, this is it. Like, there's no other question. And so I ended up going to um, EMU in Harrisonburg and just wasn't like, like I was committed, you know, and I wanted to be in an atmosphere that was 100% committed to. So being in Harrisonburg, it still was like a kind of a party school and um, being close to JMU, like we still did all the things. And I was like, yeah, this is not me. Like, I need something more serious. And at that time, my youth leader, he had come back from um, CFNI, Christ for the Nations. And so he was all telling me, hey, they're really serious. Like you're in worship all the time. You know, this is how it is. And I was like, huh, well, if that's more serious, then that's what I'm going to do. So I remember going to EMU for a semester. And I actually remember sitting at the table with my mom and dad and saying, hey, guys, I'm going to Texas. And they're like, what? And I was like, I'm, I'm going to see even I and I'm going to go next semester. And they're just kind of like, Okay, (laughs) you know, and then from there, we just kind of packed the car, you know, they drove down and then, um, yeah, drove down, flew back, I think, to help me get settled and the rest is history. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. So what happened like in your heart, like, right? So the call of God to be serious, be all in. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the person that I've known in you, right? Mm -hmm. When you're committed to something, you're in it. And I know sometimes like, right, speaking to our marriage, like your commitment didn't come easy. (laughs) Right, like you didn't want nothing to do with me, but like once you're Mm -hmm. in something, you're in it, and I've seen that in your life consistently. It's not even a pretty; it has been consistent Mm -hmm. in our entire relationship. And so, Mm -hmm. what had the Lord done in your life during that season while you were at Bible college, and and then like getting from there to marrying a former addict and we're working in rehab together? Mm -hmm. Like, did you see that? (laughs) <laughs> no. at Bible college. <laughs> so what was the Lord dealing with no. you at about Bible college? Like, Yeah, I didn't want to come back. <laughs> like, this, honestly, I was set to graduate um, in Texas and I had a pastor and his wife. They had an extra room in their basement and I was going to stay and I was going to help them. It was kind of like, I don't know, a church plant or just a new church that was just kind of getting started. And so I was like, hey, I'm going to stay with you and, you know, I'll help you with the church. And then was really just praying about it. It was like, I don't know, maybe a month left of the semester. I had to make the decision. And I remember, yeah, God just kind of was like, yeah, you're going home. And I was like, I'm not going home. And and he's like, no, you're going home. And I was like, okay, I'll go home, (laughs) you know? And so, yeah, so I came home, just started working and went back to um, my original church and started um, helping with the youth there, I believe. And then I met you. And (laughs) yeah, I was rooming with uh, my friend. That's a three hour night of worship, right? Jason Upton. Yes, yeah. we did go there. Mm-hmm. Man, I miss. I need to go. We need to go see Jason Upton. That would be good. Like, yeah. Yeah. That was such a good mm-hmm. time. So we met, got married eventually, right? And then obviously youth pastoring for a little bit, mm-hmm. but that was just like kind of a blip on the radar. It's interesting to try to figure out how God redirects paths, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm 38 now pastor in a church and I thought I was ready to do this at 22. You know, I realize now all these years later that like what was the delay was really God's mercy because I wasn't nowhere near mature or ready to be mm-hmm. lead pastor of a church. Sure. Dealing people from 18 to 85, right? Mm-hmm. Or eight months to 85, whatever that range is, the whole right. story of life and realizing like I hadn't been through some stuff, but I hadn't been through enough Mm. to be able to have the depth and the context Mm. to speak to people at different stages of their life. Sure. And that was one of the things like I always wanted to do early. And I thought that like early on in our ministry, we would do that. And then we ended up trying to plant that church. Right. And from there, like TC women's ministry started to grow mm-hmm. after we decided to step away from the church plant. I guess I'm trying to figure out, maybe I know, maybe to give context for the audience, degree, spirit filled, Bible college, Holy <laughs> Ghost, getting a hold of your life. With a children's ministry children's focus. Ministry <laughs> to Rehab. adult men and women <laughs> struggling with substance abuse. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, you used to call the TC van the drug bus. All the slang terms <laughs> and the education you've been getting. Oh, yeah. Because like, you didn't know any of that no, stuff, No, it right? didn't. And yeah. I, what I was did that feel like? Educated very fast. <laughs> Every conversation. Even then, I remember the first time we talked about Mary Jane and... I was like, <laughs> who? <laughs> Would you ever get a new student? <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, Those man. Those fun were times. good times. But what did that feel like stepping into drug and alcohol ministry? Like, as you know, as well as I do, that a lot of the people that are struggling with addiction have this mindset, well, you've never been there. Right. So you, how can you help me? You don't understand what mm, I'm going through. Right. You stepped into that role. And when we launched the women's, I mean, you did it so well. 
for so many years. And I mean, there's still people that comment on your Facebook page now randomly mm -hmm. will pop a memory up and share the impact that you had on their life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so and how did you navigate that feeling called to do this thing? And then now all of a sudden this other thing that was not a plan, not mm -hmm. on the radar anywhere. Right. And being able to just step in that confidently and just be who God called you to be in the middle of it. Right. I think it just comes down really to like obedience. Like I was going to do it with you. You know, we, we were married now. We're going to walk in this thing together. You know, we're going to do ministry together. And like, that was your passion. I mean, you were already in Teen Challenge and leading um, when I met you, right? You had stepped into that. So it was just me kind of like stepping into that with you. And I think that was really easy for me because we were doing it together and there wasn't like, I didn't have any doubt, like I'm going to be obedient and, um, to the, the Lord, not to me. Yeah. Obedient to the Lord. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And really, um, yeah. I'm walking with my husband. Yeah. Now that we're one, you know? And so yeah. it was a super new thing for me. Absolutely. I didn't want us to get canceled. <laughs> oh, funny. So. But you know what? What really stuck with me a lot of times was two things. Like David Wilkerson wasn't an addict, you know? And so that's one of the things, like he followed Holy Spirit and he was compassionate and he loved well. So that really just said to me, like, it's possible. And no matter what people would say or how they would look at me, like, dude, you're in Teen Challenge that was started by someone who was just loving and followed the call of God, yeah. you know? And so um, it was much easier. And then, you know, anything can happen. Like when you're just walking with the Holy Spirit and just being obedient. Yeah, so what would you say to somebody or a piece of encouragement that like if somebody's standing at a crossroads even now, kind of grappling with God calling them to something, and there's no question that God's asking them to do this thing and be obedient, mm -hmm. but like I'm sure in the process of that there was... But, I mean, were there moments of self-doubt and adequacy feeling and all oh, sure. that coming up? Mm -hmm. How did you, I guess, grapple with that and cope with it and be able to keep moving forward? Back to like just being obedient, like and really staying in your word and, and focusing on the plan and that call that he has on you. Like if he's called you to it, man, he's going to, what's that thing? If he calls you to it, he's going to get you through it. Right. Had people said that before, but really like, um, that's a real is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's getting chopped up. <laughs> anyway, no. um, so like stay focused on that. Like so many people are going to say so many things, but when you stay confident on like God's called me here, like he's obviously showed me that this is where I'm supposed to go. Like just stay confident in that and be obedient because he's going to, he's just going to take you through. Well, I can't say back then cause we're back in it now, but some of the craziness like, you know, walking through that and maybe for context, it might make it a little more on easier for people to understand mm -hmm. the fact that there were like, you were pregnant. <laughs> we had kids like, right. like you were still nursing Lydia when we started the women's home, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, and we got a women's home in our basement living in the mountain oh, yeah. and, and, <laughs> and some of those seasons of life, like just the craziness of mm -hmm. all of it. Raising a family above the ladies. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was just wild. Like and up the stairs, not like above, but like right. up the stairs. three bedrooms in the basement, but just of walking through that season, raising mm -hmm. a young family, but yet having to trust in every step in obedience because mm -hmm. that's where the Lord had called us in that season. I know that wasn't easy in those first four years, right before the kids got in school. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, obviously there was more time, you know, to do ministry, and I know right. that sounds crazy, but we're homeschoolers, right? And so mm -hmm. once we hit five, like things changed dra right. dramatically for Chloe. And then mm -hmm. now with, you know, three girls in school, but on some of the fun stories, right? Praying for people and then getting cursed out by them. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to fight me. <laughs> right? Then 30 minutes later, I'll, I'll never I love forget you. that. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> right? Crying at the altar and then right up in the face, ready to throw, throw fist just a few minutes later. And um, yeah, those the times were for real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so that was a fun season. Yeah, for sure. And everybody's listening now. So are we ever doing it again? Another, another women's home in the future? Maybe so. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. I mean, there's some dreams in that, though. I think one of the things you and I were mm -hmm. pretty consistent on growing, you know, like when we got married, was having two and adopting two. Mm -hmm. Even though I fought you when we wanted to adopt yeah right yeah uh, we both came together with that idea which is cool yeah everything's easy till you do it <laughs> right <laughs> you know and and sometimes like i man i, I yeah I mean, that's just that's enough i don't even have to say anything else about that okay. but that was part of our journey too so we go through this season like i come home from teen challenge mm -hmm. 
you graduate Christ for the Nations. We end up in rehab ministry together for years while raising kids, figuring all that out, mm-hmm. and then homeschooling, and now foster care and adoption being a major part part of our life. I mean, I'm not afraid to say it. Like you were much more passionate about foster right. care and adoption more than I was. Sure. And so where where did that come from? Like you've had some dreams, some mm-hmm. God dreams along the way, and what right. like what did what did God? How did He speak to you? to do that, you know, be so passionate about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always been passionate about kids, right? So that's always been a focus for me. But yeah, like I would have these kid dreams at Safe and I. One particular, I know it's a God dream, so that's what I call it. Like I found this, there's a baby sitting in a shopping cart outside of Walmart and it's dark outside and the light is shining down on him and he's just sitting in the cart crying. I think that was the very first dream that I had was like, what is this? Like, where is this going? And so then, yeah, and I think God just continually like melted my heart. You know, I would see like commercials or um, advertisements or something like that. And like, as soon as it like started, like I would just start bawling. <laughs> like, oh, well, something's happening here. Yeah. Like God is like shifting me a little bit. And so now it's really, I'm really passionate about like his kids, like having a family, like they all deserve a family, you yeah. know, and being pulled out of hard situations. Do you think Emily was a fulfillment of that dream? I don't know. I've never talked about that before. It yeah. just kind of dawned on me like hearing Mm -hmm. you say it you know and yeah the circumstances in which we got emily Mm -hmm. and her being abandoned you know and and whatnot and then it's Mm -hmm. kind of wild so the first time doing that i mean we we had our first two kids come home during the pandemic right we were out of teen challenge at this point and that's Mm -hmm. a whole other story and i've talked about that on previous episodes on but like the first two children coming in and that was a learning experience it was yes they were older, and um, we had talked about keeping in our, um, which is, what is that called? Like the age. The age. Range. Yeah, in birth, birth order. There it is. Yeah. You know, we were excited, first kids, and we said, um, yes, well, let's take, let's go out of what we had said and out of the birth order, and uh, that was a little chaotic, you know? And of course, that the um, country set, shut down for COVID, and so five girls and nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got to um, go to work. Oh, yeah. Chick-fil-A lucky you. <laughs> Yes, here we were. And, you know, emotions high. This is the first placements. You know, the girls built good friendships after, you know, it took some time to get used to it. But uh, by the end, they were good friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a learning experience. And then mm-hmm. the part of like, this is going to be six months and 18 months later. <laughs> like <laughs> Everything was just super slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I get it. You know, they don't yeah. know. You know, For sure. You try to guess the best you uh-huh. can. COVID slowed down things. Yeah. And so, but that was fun. That was a year and a half. And on... Learned a lot. We did. And then we mm-hmm. adjusted the age range, I think, the next time around. And so mm-hmm. I want to ask, like, um, you don't have to. I can cut this out if you don't want to share it. But, like, the experience of getting the call and going over the mountain. And we've talked mm-hmm. about this a bit and whatnot. And, um, like, even then, just speaking about this place of obedience, right? We say that a lot. That's kind of our, our statement. Mm-hmm. And I don't know I don't know who we picked it up from. I don't know if it was the Ellers or the Stu Millers or somebody in mm-hmm. our circle used to use this statement, this phrase all the time, mm-hmm. just saying the next yes. Yes, just do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and so we've kind of mm-hmm. co-opted that, you right. know, and it's like, yeah, we don't have to figure the whole plan out. It's just the very next yes. Right. And so mm-hmm. that's been our life. I mean, youth ministry, church plant that we walked away from because God was calling us to Teen Challenge. Mm -hmm. And there are stories all along the way that what looked like failure to everybody on the outside was really God setting us up for the next thing. Mm -hmm. That had we not been obedient to walk into something that like failed. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes, and um, we we don't think about that a lot, that like God's not calling us to success always. Or in the, at least in the worldly standards, right? Right. He's calling us to obedience and like even going up and doing that church plant thing and then like feeling like, well, this was for nothing. Mm. And we it felt like a failure. And then from that place, like we were there and that's where God began to grow SVTC. Like it was just straight up and to the right. Right. Yes, you know, <laughs> over those next few years. And had we not said yes and then where we were... Mm. I don't think that that would have never happened. Mm. And then even that, the foster care, uh, pastoring now, everything's just been a yes, being back at Teen Challenge. Mm-hmm. And some people would be like, well, you're a rabid squirrel. You're kind of all over the place. But it's like, 
I'm just trying to be obedient. And as sometimes I struggle with that because I think the more you grow and the more you mature, the more open doors happen for you. Because there is like God directing the steps and then man wants to give opportunity. Sure. And the struggle sometimes I think is discernment. Right. And knowing like mm -hmm. what is an open door just because like I've got out. some experience now. Right. And what is actually a God door. Right. And and mm -hmm. we I think we've done all right figuring that out. Mm -hmm. Um but sometimes we're like meh yeah, well, <laughs> not that it's been easy. Right. We but learned some things in the way. Taking the long path there sometimes. But like, <laughs> right. <laughs> so specifically, though, going over the mountain, getting that call, and not even knowing that we didn't know whether it was a placement, whether it was an adoption. Like, we had no information other than just come hold this baby. I don't know. Do you feel comfortable, like, kind of bringing us in? You went over first by yourself, I believe, right? No, you no, went, we went together, the first time. And then you started going back over and over and right. over. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't with you, like, on all those visits. And so mm -hmm. maybe I should have been, because, like, I set myself up for a long, lifelong commitment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, mm -hmm. yeah, but just what was God doing in your heart? First, it was, like, when we first committed, it was just, like, you know, it had to be open to whatever, however this goes, right? And, oh, my gosh, it's a baby, <laughs> you know? So um, whatever needs to happen. And then when she said, like, you know, it was a couple of days and, and the baby hasn't been, um, she hadn't been named. What was her name? Um, baby baby girl. girl, right? And so they just referred to her as that. And so then a couple of days later, they are like, well, I just waited for um, DSS to name her. And they're like, well, would you guys do it? And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And she, of course, like, talk to Justin. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So, but then I remember um, I was standing in our bedroom and, and I was just thinking like, you know, because when you name kid, you know, it could just cause so much more like connection, right? And so we really had to ponder on that too. But I remember um, being like, oh my gosh, God, you know, before I think I talked to you, I was like, are we supposed to do this? Like, uh, should we name her? What What's going on here? And I just remember him saying, you're going to give her identity. Mm. And like, that's all. Mm. I don't want to cry. But like, that was it. And I'm like, Okay. We're going to do this, you know, and then whatever it takes. And at that time, you're like, well, we don't know. Right. Like, let's just stick with fostering. And we don't know about um, adoption, you know. And so I was like, and so then whatever, I had to put that back on God too. I was like, well, whatever this needs to look like, God, I'm just going to be obedient, you know, just back to that. Like, I'm just going to do what I need to do at this moment. Yeah. And so um, we were able to, to name her and then it began. And yeah, so every other day I was going to UVA. To see her, well, to sit there for a while because at first, you know, I couldn't hold her um, very much or at all. It's hard to think back to all that. But, and really just got working there too because it's it's not an easy thing to sit in the NICU for hours. <laughs> like right. praying for all those babies and there's so many things going on and there's so many different um, issues going on, you know, and babies come and go because, you know, they've been released and yay and, you know, I'm still sitting there and then other babies have been there for a long time and, you know, just seeing like everyone having to walk through their stuff, you know, and so it can be challenging and then just sitting there like watching the monitors <laughs> like for hours. Yeah. And so um, it can just be very wearing, but, you know, it was a God thing that, um, that when we first got there, I don't know if you remember the story, but like the nurse was like, we've been waiting for you, you know, as she hadn't had anybody to come and hold her and, and, um, any other people. And like, I totally believe that that was God because that of all the nurses, I saw so many of them, like that one nurse who had been there since Emily had been born. Like I never saw her again, hmm. you know? And so I know like, Wow, like God was working through things like from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think about that and like I think God is like he's been faithful at times to send things in my life to slow me down. Mm -hmm. And in a good way. I don't mean sure. that as a knock like mm -hmm. when I may be on a trajectory that's not healthy for myself. Mm -hmm. And ultimately give me his best even though I had different plans. Sure. And like, mm -hmm. I was hesitant. Like, uh, we didn't sign up to do adoption at first. Right. As like we were going to be short term foster parents, mm -hmm. and you know everybody we talked to is like, well, I don't know how you could do that. But we had spent fifteen years 
in transient ministry. Right. People come in and going all the time. Right. And so like, I mm-hmm. think we were equipped for at least that part of it. I mean, it's never easy, but, but, but like you resilience. work through it. Yeah. yeah. And so, mm-hmm. you for know, sure. I think that part was, was okay. Like we have a job, we have a, a role to play and we're comfortable playing that role, mm-hmm. whatever that needs to look like. Right. And so this was like, Oh, like this is lifelong. Mm-hmm. And, um, but and I, I was th- in. Uh, well, no. I knew, I knew as soon as you <laughs> named her. I remember us having that conversation. But that's where mm-hmm. I was struggling because it's like, man, we're a few months in. We have no clue what, what her future is going to look like. I mean, mm-hmm. medical issues, all that stuff that was just questioned up in the air. Mm-hmm. I was wrestling with that. It's like I, this commitment could change drastically. Mm-hmm. And I think in the back of my mind, I'm on, um, yeah, that stuff terrifies me. You know, I don't. I don't do well around hospitals and sickness right. and, and he life. did pass out when I was giving birth <laughs> right, both times. Um, but on um, that part was, was tough. But then like God, like I, I remember pacing around the yard and God was dealing with you. You had made your commitment. And I remember pacing around the yard, just praying and pondering one evening. And so that's when the Lord really shifted my heart and it wasn't still wasn't easy you know, we had to go through some stuff and there was a lot of other stuff going on. I think on the outside, there's just causing pressure. But like mm. from there, I think we were, we were in and on, and then it was just wait and see. Right. Yeah. Did I tell yep. the story right? Was I, did, I in I after that so. or no? Yeah, you were in after or that. Or did I give you turmoil? No, I think, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're in. Yeah. And so now... Yeah like the faithfulness of the Lord two years later. Mm -hmm. Like she's running, she's healthy. She's good. Yeah. And not knowing any of that, but like, yeah. And she's so joyful. (laughs) Like, like nothing's nothing's ever gone wrong, you know? Yeah. It's just life for her. Yeah. She is, she is pretty incredible. And so that's been fun. And then now pastoring and teen challenge and all of that. But on, I don't know. I don't want to go into all the nitty gritty of what we're doing now, but Sunday we get to do this again yes. with other people on stage. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about that to right. chat with uh, Amber and Amanda. I think it is for project belong are going to be on stage at church and mm-hmm. we get to have some conversations about foster care and how they're making a difference. And that's awesome. I know you are passionate about this cause mm-hmm. you're going to be on stage. <sighs> <laughs> and so, so yeah, we'll ask a couple questions just to kind of, close out and have fun Well, not really have fun but really just kind of put a bow on the whole thing sustained obedience to the lord over the long term is not easy i guess it can be a muscle the more you use it the better and easier now i don't know that it ever gets easier and there's still a wrestling almost that happens sure what's been key for you because the one thing i know about you ashley is like and maybe a lot of people don't that a lot of people who aren't close like you are just consistent you just are who you are No matter where we go, opportunities don't change that. You know what I'm saying? Like there's like, we've, we've got to do some cool stuff. We've, we've been in some fun places, but like, no matter where the Lord puts us, you're just who you are. You're just consistent. I mean, that's a good thing. Right. But Mm -hmm. like in that you have this ability to just be obedient to the Lord and what he's asking out of you. And so what has been like Bible college, leaving home, all this journey of life and every, every step along. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, I, how do you keep your heart tender and I guess maybe even your mind and your spirit open to be able to hear from the Lord and know and be able to just say yes, you know, consistently as you have? Like, I don't know if you're ever really comfortable with it um, because you just never know. Like some yeses, I'm sure they've been like, mm, <laughs> like really, <laughs> like I really have to do that, you know. But then like knowing that, um, gosh, he's a good father, you know? And so really keeping that in the back of your mind, like, um, or really the front of your mind that he wants all good things for me, mm-hmm. you know, even if I don't like it or, um, it's different or there's a change, you know, like in the end it's for my good, you know, mm-hmm. and he doesn't waste anything. Like I remember when someone said that to me, like it's forever stuck with me. He doesn't waste anything that happens to you, you know, so he turns all things around um, for the good. And so, you know, I don't know if I've really ever really doubted because if he, gosh, if he's got the big picture, you know, and this is the way he's pointing me, then like, why not? <laughs> yeah. 
you know? Yeah, that's good. Then, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Does that make sense? It does, absolutely. I do want to speak, though, one more thing about these these dreams. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the funny part about these God dreams, and now, like, I don't know. I never dreamed a lot when we first got married, but now, like, like I'm getting them randomly it's been happening recently but like <laughs> i don't want to talk about my dreams in this moment i want to talk about yours mm. and the dream on the mountain <laughs> and like do you remember that i do yeah do you want to tell the story <laughs> no please <laughs> no. it's so good i'll tell my part because yeah, i think you remember more than i do uh no you remember um <laughs> no, i remember <laughs> i remember what happened after right um we don't have to go into all that i don't right, right, right. <laughs> yeah yeah so i dreamed that like something was um being covered up yeah on the mountain and you know i mean god is on it man yeah. <laughs> and so um like that was one thing that we were always like well something's going on you know we're like should we go investigate and we're like no you know god was so faithful all the time like if there's something going on like crazy then he's going to reveal it right yeah. that was like you know, he was so faithful with that. And so I turned up in my dream. I was like, well, this is what I dreamed. This is interesting. Let's go check it out. And for sure, um, or sure enough, where it was in my dream is when we found right. um, <laughs> what was being exposed. And so yeah. like... Well, you called me and told me about the dream. Oh, did I? Yeah. See, I don't even remember all those details. <laughs> if you had the dream, you told me about it. And I'm like, well, I'll just go do a room search. <laughs> And so I went, to, and sure enough, it was exactly what you dream. And that's crazy. Like, I mean, it's not crazy because God speaks, still, mm -hmm. and He speaks through dreams and prayer, all kinds of different things. Sure, like He has ways of speaking. But right. I'd have never doubted like your your ability to hear the Lord and dream. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of those things where where like God had been faithful. Like, man, sometimes too, like we're. I think it's that season that gave me so much patience. Mm. Like, even though I, I like to pursue things. Like in regards to if I'm leading something mm -hmm. and things are happening and motives aren't right and people have impure motives or doing things behind the scenes, like ultimately, mm. like God will fight my battles. He'll fight our battles. Mm. And sometimes I think we end up causing more chaos in our relationships and conflict in our life because we are trying to uncover things and expose mm -hmm. things. Yes, there is a responsibility as leaders to correct, but sure. like... If God uncovers something, mm -hmm. like his correction is going to be much better than my correction will ever be. Sure. And like I, I we realize that yeah. at Teen Challenge. Now, now, don't get me wrong. We did a lot of correction at Teen Challenge as well <laughs> right. without dreams. <laughs> but Right. When it was needed. Yeah. But mm -hmm. like those moments, undeniable. Right. Like the Lord showing up and he's speaking and exposing something that could have caused much more damage in the long term. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for the faithfulness of the Lord in that. So as we close out, what's the thing that annoys you about me the most? <laughs> annoys you? That Always annoys, annoys you me. About me. Okay, yeah. So we are so different, right? You're a visionary. You're like on the go. You jump things, jump from one thing to the other. And um, as you said, I like keep it going. You know, I like the details and just a lot different. So I guess um, I've actually learned that it's actually a blessing most of the time. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> here's an instance um like in homeschooling you've gotten really really good much better at this but there'll be days like we're just working 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 especially toward the end of the year because you know you have to get things done so you can do the testing and all that stuff but like i'll be on track and i'm focused and the girls are focused and then in the middle you like hop in the door and you're like let's go for ice cream and i'm like are you kidding me? <laughs> and I remember, you know, and, and at the big, very beginning, like in our early days, I was like, are you serious? Like, do you see my schedule here? Do you see what's going on? We have things to do, you know, but I've learned that that was like healthy most of the time <laughs> right. because, you know, it would take some of the stress off. It would break up our day. You know, we had the freedom to do that. And then like the girls super enjoyed it. Like, yeah. yes, and it was such a brain break that we actually really needed. I mean, it was annoying for a second, but then, you know, and so it's turned out to be a blessing most of the time, but sometimes it can be irritating just because we are so different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Mm -hmm. Do you want to hear mine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, no, that, I think that's cool, though. I think that's the beauty of, like, God bringing us together in, mm -hmm. in the two different worlds that sure. we, we came from. And then, mm -hmm. like, 
the difference in personalities, like just walking alongside of each other and you having dreams, me having dreams. But then like, even on, even at TC, like, like I've told you this privately, but none of that happens without you. Mm. Like, and cause I do know that I, like I live in the clouds and you've always been the steady and the balance. Like you need both. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of sometimes we end up trying to be what we're not. A lot of people make that mistake and it's like, well, I've got to be better at this thing. And, and, and yes, there's personal development and there's growth, but sure, God created all of us uniquely. And I think that's the beauty of even the fivefold ministry, right? Mm -hmm. That like not everybody's called to do the same thing. And when the body right. works together and functions and that's what marriage is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Ramsey, I remember him saying all the time, if you marry somebody just like you, one of you is unnecessary. <laughs> right. And I'm grateful that neither of us is unnecessary, right? Mm -hmm. So that's always good to yeah, know that sure. and know that there's that balance and just see what the Lord does next, you know? Mm -hmm. And So I'm excited though, because this was just kind of a get to know you session. And yes, yeah. How was it? It was fine. Yeah. It was better than I thought. So try to get together and talk a little bit more. And so just I wanted to get a chance to introduce people on the podcast to the person behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. um, man, we were listening to a sermon yesterday about that that wrecked my world. And I won't go into the details on that today, but just knowing God created you to be, even though you've been on stages before, like that's not, not where you're running. You're not running to that. Mm -mm. And like... <laughs> the person you are steady and constant and consistent mm -hmm. and, you know, faithful in, and whatever you do behind the scenes, like I value and appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And so I think for people to that are watching, even on YouTube, Facebook, all the places that we put this, like I'm on, my face is out there all the time. Right. And mm -hmm. even ministry life and teen challenge, I was the guy with the mic doing all of that. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm, very aware, you know, <laughs> that without <laughs> you, I'm a hot jumbled mess. And so uh, wow. I'm excited about that and uh, being able to talk a little bit more. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Ashley and I. We're going to be trying to do these every two weeks. So if you have any questions, comments, or any topics that you'd like us to dive into going forward, just as we engage in conversation, please leave those below. Also, please don't forget to hit the like button, share the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.